Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about December's perfume tray. So if you're new to these kind of videos, I pick out 10 fragrances to focus on for each month. And then I always do a recap of the month before. I talk about those 10 fragrances and let you know how I'm feeling. This is my way of being able to break my collection down into bite-sized pieces, if you will. It helps me to go through my collection and really get to know my fragrances. Sometimes I get a little overwhelmed if my collection gets too large and just taking 10 to focus on for the month is helpful for me. If you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Jackie. Thank you for clicking on my thumbnail. If you like this video, if you find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you're interested in seeing the perfumes I've picked for the month of December, then just keep on watching. All right guys, so first up, let's go ahead and talk about November's perfume tray. So I do have a perfume in here that I am considering decluttering. I did not like it very much this month, you guys. And this is by Jimmy Choo and this is Illicit. I was kind of surprised by this because as you can see, I've worn this one a few times. There's a nice little dent in here. So when I first got this fragrance, I remember liking it, but then I kind of put it away for a little while and I hadn't worn it for a bit. And then I just pulled it out and November months and months later and for some reason I just didn't enjoy it yeah I just I don't enjoy this fragrance all that much which is kind of crazy because you'd think I would love this fragrance it has all the notes that I love so this has ginger and orange in the opening it also has some florals which I don't pick up a ton of the florals I definitely get the ginger in here for sure there's honey there's amber there's caramel there's vanilla sandalwood I love all of those notes so I'm not really sure what it is about this fragrance that I found annoying but that's basically how I felt. So I would spray this perfume on and I would think, oh, that's nice. But then after a couple of hours, it just got on my nerves and I really wished that I was wearing something else. And that's usually a sign for me that I'm coming to the end of my time with that fragrance because you know, sometimes you just have an off day. Sometimes you pick a fragrance and you're like, oh man, I wish I had worn something else. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're done with the fragrance. It just didn't suit your mood that day. But every single time I pulled for this one, I felt that way. And yeah, that's just a sign that I'm not into it. I, I really cannot pinpoint what it is about this fragrance that really just doesn't do it for me anymore, but it's just not my vibe for some reason. It just doesn't smell overly smooth to me. I'm not ready to let go of it yet. I'm gonna try it out a couple more times, but if I continue to have that experience, don't be surprised to see this in an upcoming declutter video. So that is by Jimmy Choo and that is Illicit. All right, another perfume I found myself struggling with a little bit this month and and I'm kind of surprised because when I first got this fragrance, I absolutely loved it. And my first impression of it, I was just kind of over the moon with it. But the more I wore it in the month of November, the more something in here started to get to me. And that is by Mansara, and that is Choco Violet. Like I said, if you guys watch my video where I haul this, I tell you guys that I love it. And I do, when I smell it off the cap, like when I smell it right now, it smells amazing. So there's orange in the opening of this and then there's violet in here as well. And there's something, I think it's the violet. I'm really, really sensitive to violet in my fragrances. And when I first smelled this, the violets smelled really delicate, almost like those violet candies mixed with that dark chocolate and there's some hazelnut in here as well. But the violet after a while starts to bug me. So yeah, I can wear this for about three or four hours and then after that I'm like over it. So I'm not really sure what that means. I, I'm definitely not ready to declutter this. I need to give it a couple more tries before I make my decision. I did compare this to Chocolate Greedy and because a lot of people think that this smells like Chocolate Greedy but I actually when I was comparing the two side by side I do notice differences in the fragrances. Chocolate Greedy doesn't have violet in it and I can definitely make up the violet in here. Chocolate Greedy doesn't have hazelnut. This one seems a little bit like creamier. The violet is definitely present and when I was comparing the two side by side I was testing them out a little bit more. I noticed that I was really preferring Chocolate Greedy over this fragrance and I'm not sure if I'll be keeping this one. I'm not, like I said, I'm not ready to declutter it yet, but I'm really just not sure. The performance of this is really good. It lasts forever, 
but that's kind of annoying because I'm over this perfume in about four hours of wear and I'm like, okay, wishing, you know, that I had something else on. Don't be surprised if you do eventually see this in an upcoming declutter video. I will keep you posted, but that is by Mansara Chaco Violet. All right, all the rest of the perfumes for the month of November I absolutely loved. So up next we have by Ellis Brooklyn. This is B. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This is rum in the opening. There's honey in here. There's Devana, I believe, in the opening as well. And there's some cacao and vanilla, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you like honey, if you like boozy, sweet, honeyed type fragrances, like to me, this smells like a boozy cinnamon rum cake with some honey. There is a brand note in here that kind of tempers down the sweetness and I really think that's important in here just because this might be a little bit too sweet if it wasn't for the brand. If you're a gourmand sweet honey type of person this is perfect for fall. Yeah I enjoy this one every time I wear it. So I do think this is full bottle worthy. I'm not getting a full bottle of this one yet because I'm going to force myself to go through the travel size. Like if I can't finish the travel size then I'm not getting a full bottle. That's my rule. I have to finish the travel size or the decant first and then I can get the bottle. But that is by Ellis Brooklyn B. All right up next we have by Killian. This is Angel Share. I wore this one for Thanksgiving and it was absolutely perfect. This is a sweet, boozy cinnamon apple pie with some woody notes in the base to help round it out. And if you've been watching my channel, you know this is my favorite perfume of all time. This perfume just has my heart, you guys. I love this one so much. I will say though that I do struggle to wear this one just because I find it to be so good and I love it so much and it's so special to me that sometimes I don't reach for it because I wanna save it for special occasions. And that's just such a shame because this is such a good one. I'm trying to get over it. I'm trying to wear this one more. This is the time, you know? It's starting to get colder here. This is the time for this perfume to shine. I am gonna be putting it on my December tray because I think I probably will be wearing this for Christmas as well. And yeah, I just love this one. This is gorgeous performance, gorgeous perfume. If you love apple scents, if you love cinnamon, if you love boozy fragrances, this is also woody as well. So it's not a straight up gourmand, it's a semi-gourmand with some woody notes. But basically to me, this smells like a boozy apple pie and I just adore it. So that is by Killian Angel Share. All right, I also thoroughly enjoyed Kayali's Love Fest Burning Cherry. You can see the dent that I put in this this month. I wore this one quite a bit. I find that this one is a really, really good perfume to wear for layering with other cherry scents as well, but it's also beautiful on its own. So this has that kind of Tom Ford's Lost Cherry in the opening, but then it goes in a completely different direction. It has Palo Santo in here, and I feel like that Palo Santo smells to me like the inside of a sauna. Think of like hot wood in a sauna with a bunch of delicious yummy cherries. It's so, so, so good. The only thing I have to say is I don't think the performance is that great. It only lasts about four hours on me with a moderate projection. I do have to overspray and I do have to reapply in the middle of the day, but I just love the way it smells so, so much. So I did enjoy this one. And like I said, I did put quite a nice dent in this fragrance. So that is Kayali Love Fest Burning Cherry 48. I also enjoyed by Givenchy, this is Linter de Rouge. And this is a gorgeous fragrance. I love this fragrance so much. This was absolutely perfect for November. This is spicy and it's also, if you've ever smelled the original Linter D, this does have a lot of that like Linter D DNA, but then add a lot of spiciness in the opening. So the opening has, uh, I think it's pimento leaf and there's something else in here. Is it ginger, I think? Yeah, there's ginger and blood orange in the opening of this, but there's also a lot of tuberose, just like in the original. If you're a tuberose lover, you're gonna love this. If you like spicy, sweet fragrances, this is absolutely gorgeous. Every single time I wore this, I loved it. It is so good and so perfect for fall. Plus, I've told you guys before, I love the color of this bottle. The performance of this is absolutely outstanding and I just think this is a fantastic, warm, spicy, tuberose kind of scent. If you like ginger, if you like orange, you're gonna like this. There's sandalwood, patchouli, and vetiver in the base. I don't really pick up a whole lot of patchouli, but I do get that 
sandalwood and a little bit of vetiver in the base for sure. And I just think it's just so elegant and classy. And I love the combination of spicy and sweet together. Oh, it's so good. So I adore, adore this one. That is by Givenchy Linderdy Rouge. I also had Clinique Cookies and Kisses. I wore this one to bed a few times in the month of November. This is just a very cozy fragrance. To me, this one doesn't really perform very well, so I don't really wear it out, but I like it for being inside my home. Like if I'm gonna curl up on the couch or read a book or just be home, you know, if I'm gonna go to bed. It's very cozy, comforting type of scent. It smells to me a lot like By the Fireplace, but if you took By the Fireplace and you made it incredibly feminine and you made it a lot more sweet, that's what this smells like to me. So this is definitely my version of By the Fireplace. I don't care for that fragrance very much. To me, By the Fireplace just smells so masculine and it is so realistic to actually sitting by a fireplace. I actually would rather have the candle than wear it as a fragrance, but this is just a sweet, delicious, yummy version of it and very feminine leaning. So this has pink pepper, bergamot, and apple in the opening. I definitely don't get any apple at all. I get more of like a pink peppery, spicy kind of kick. There's chestnut in here, which kind of reminds me of that by the fireplace vibes for sure. There's pimento that gives it that spicy kind of kick as well. And then there's guyac wood, sandalwood in here. It's just, it's very woody, It's but still very sweet and feminine. So I absolutely love this one, but again, performance is not great. I only get about four hours out of this one and it doesn't project very much, but I do find it to be super comfy, cozy. I got this bottle for like $25, so I can't complain too much. And it is one of my favorite like fall, winter fragrances to, wear to bed or to curl up to read a book or watch a movie with. So that is Clinique Cookies and Kisses. I absolutely adored by Mugler. This is Angel Muse EDT. Every time I wear this perfume, I absolutely love it. This perfume never ever disappoints. I don't know if this would be top 10. Like I was going over in my mind like what my top 10 for life would be now and I need to update that video but I don't know I'm struggling with that right now and I kept wondering if this would be in it because I just adore this fragrance but I don't know. I don't think it is a top 10 but it is up there for me. I love the opening of passion fruit in here but then as this starts to dry down I get a lot of hazelnut and it reminds me so so much of Nutella and I love Nutella and then you have like this patchouli in the base it's very fruity in the opening and then it's this creamy yummy Nutella and then it's kind of earthy in the base <laughs> it is a very odd fragrance in my opinion but it is so good this is the EDT version I do prefer the EDT over the EDP even though this is EDT it performs like an EDP. It's strong, so it will not give you any problems with performance. I can smell it on me all day long, and I just love it so much. I think it's so cozy, comforting, and it makes me hungry. It makes me want to eat Nutella every time I wear it, so thoroughly enjoyed this one. That is by Mugler Angel Muse, the EDT version. All right, and then we had by Exidolo Love and Crime. I did get to put a little bit of a dent in here, finally. I've had this for a while and I'm very sparing with this fragrance because I love the way it smells. I think it's an absolute gorgeous gourmand fragrance, but this little itty bitty tiny bottle is freaking expensive. <laughs> and for some reason, it just makes me like act stingy with this fragrance. But this month, or the month of November, I should say, I wore this one quite a few times and did put a good little dent in the perfume. So this to me smells like a spicy orange cake, like an, a spicy orange sponge cake is what this smells like. It does smell very similar to Lyra by Zerzhov, so if you like that one, you're definitely going to like this. This has a little bit of a spicy pink pepper kick in the opening. This has better performance in my opinion than Lyra. And actually this has excellent performance. Every time I wear this one, I can smell it pretty much for the entire day. And it's not like a super strong fragrance that fills up the room, but it is definitely present. I can smell it on me. It's projecting. I've gotten compliments on this one. It's very sweet, very gourmand, spicy orange sponge cake, exactly what it smells like to me. And I think it is delicious and perfect for fall. So that is by Exidolo Love and Crime. All right, speaking of compliments, you guys, this combination got me compliments when I wore it. This wasn't on my tray, but I just decided to pair these together this month. 
This is by Bath and Body Works Strawberry Pound Cake Lotion. So I took this and then this was on my tray. So this is by Lancome and this is La Nuit Tresor. And this fragrance has strawberry in here. That's pretty much the fruit that I get the most from this fragrance. I get in the opening a very big like strawberry note. And I thought, okay, let's add a strawberry lotion with a strawberry fragrance and put them together. Oh my gosh, you guys, this combination is absolute fire. But on its own, La Nuit Tresor is beautiful. You don't have to have that lotion. This perfume is absolutely gorgeous. So this has a ton of notes, but there's like bergamot, tangerine, there's pear in the opening, then you have strawberry, there's rose, there's passion fruit in here. So quite a lot of fruits, but the fruit that really stands out the most to my nose is the strawberry, which is what made me think of the lotion. And then there's also praline in here. There's caramel, there's lychee, there's vanilla, patchouli, there's incense, there's coffee, there's licorice in here, which I adore licorice in my perfumes. I feel like licorice just gives a perfume such a sexy base. A lot of people describe this perfume as like super dark and sexy, and I do find this to be a dark, sexy fragrance for sure, but I think the fruity notes that are in here kind of uplifts it a little bit so it's not super dark. So if you're afraid of like really dark fragrances, this isn't really that dark in my opinion. Like the strawberry is very strong in here. There's bergamot that kind of lifts it up a little bit. So don't let that scare you. It's just a really well-balanced fragrance, but it is very sexy in my opinion. I don't really pick up a lot of coffee. There's a little bit of a kind of a smoky vibe in here from the incense, but it's very subdued. It's very, very much in the background. This is just a very smooth, delicious, strawberry, sexy, semi-dark fragrance. Try this combination, it is absolutely gorgeous. All right, guys, let's get into the perfumes that I'm picking for the month of December. I am putting on my tray by Chanel. This is Coco Mademoiselle Intense. I am so excited to dip into this finally. I have been waiting for colder weather to wear this. I love this perfume so much. I love the original Coco Mademoiselle, but to me, I feel like I wear that one more like in warmer weather, whereas in colder weather, I wanna reach for the intense version. This smells pretty similar to the original, but there's more patchouli and more vanilla in here. This is a little bit deeper, darker, a little bit more intense, just a tiny bit. I mean, the original Coco Mademoiselle has amazing performance, don't get me wrong. This has amazing performance as well. So I wouldn't say the performance is better, but it is a little bit like deeper, darker. So I'm very excited to pull this out. I am a huge, huge Coco Mademoiselle fan. I have been actually craving this scent. So I think most of us know what this smells like, but in case you don't, it says orange, bergamot, and lemon in the opening. So it's kind of bright and uplifting in the opening. And then there's some fruity notes. There's some rose, there's some jasmine in here. So it has some beautiful fruity, like floral touches to it as well. But then in the base, there's a lot of like patchouli, vanilla, tonka bean, there's musk in here. It definitely has that classic Chanel patchouli in here that I absolutely adore. And like I said, the intense version just has more vanilla and more patchouli. It's a little bit less bright in the opening as well. The original Coco Mademoiselle seems a little bit brighter in the opening, a little bit, just a touch more citrusy than this one. This is my favorite one. I love both, this is my favorite. So that is by Chanel Coco Mademoiselle Intense. Also by Chanel, I am putting Coco Noir on my tray. This is brand new to my collection. I got this during the Sephora holiday savings event. I'm so excited to pull this out and play with it. This is kind of like Coco Mademoiselle in a way, but not really. I mean, it's definitely its own perfume. It just has that classic Chanel patchouli in here, but this is more like warm, spicy, and woody. This is absolutely gorgeous. I have been lusting after this fragrance for a long time, but I never pulled the trigger because I was afraid the performance wasn't very good. But the couple of times that I have tested this out, I found the performance to be okay. It's not great, but it's okay good enough for me and I'm super excited to wear this one. So to me, this is very sexy. So in the opening, you do have those citrusy notes. You have some grapefruit, I think there's bergamot, there's some orange in the opening of this. In the mid, you have a lot of floral notes. There's some rose, there's some jasmine. There's just a lot of florals going on in here. There's also peach in here as well, but I don't really pick up peach. Yeah, I don't pick up peach from this perfume. I swear, I don't think I can pick up peach in perfumes. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like every time it's in a perfume, I just never pick it up. Um, there's a lot of patchouli in here, sandalwood, tonka bean, musk, vanilla. There's cloves and there's benzoin in here as well. And I really do pick up the cloves in here. I feel like the cloves in this fragrance is what like makes or breaks it for a lot of people. I love the cloves in here. I'm a big fan of cloves in my perfumes, but I do think that is one of the reasons why this is not everybody's cup of tea. But to me, this is like elegant, boss lady, I mean business, very put together boss woman wears this fragrance. And I just think it's beautiful. Plus I love the bottle. I think the bottle is stunning. So that is by Chanel Coco Noir. Of course I had to put the new Kaoli in here. This is the Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli 64. And I did a full dedicated review on this fragrance. I won't go into too much detail about this because I did a big long video dedicated to this fragrance. Check it out. I'll link it in the description box if you're interested. But this was pretty much a love at first sniff for me. I'm a big, big fan. To me, I mostly get rum, I get a lot of patchouli, I get some vanilla, I get a tiny touch of a leathery, like a super, super smooth leather and some creme brulee in here. It's sweet, it's boozy. This is gorgeous. Just stunning. The performance is really good and this smells incredible. I'm, I'm a big, big fan. So I'm super excited to wear this one. I think this is absolutely perfect for the winter time. This just fits the cold weather to me so much. It's super sexy. It's super enjoyable to wear. Definitely get your nose on it. Not a safe blind buy at all. So many people are getting so many different things from this perfume. You know, the reasoning for that is because people feel very strongly about some of the notes in here. You know, there's oud, there's leather, there's patchouli in this fragrance, and people have very strong opinions about those types of notes. So it is not going to be for everyone. Do not blind buy this. Get your nose on it first, but for me, it is a 100% yes. And it's giving Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper a run for its money. I'll just tell you that right now. Like, you guys know how much I love Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. I've raved about that perfume for a long time. Love that fragrance. I think this might be my favorite Kaoli. It's definitely up there, for sure. So, I'm super excited to wear it. So, that is by Kaoli Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli 64. Okay, up next, another one I am dying to put on my tray. I'm so excited. I love this perfume, you guys so, so much. Uh, every time I wear it, I love it more and more. It was a love at first sniff, and every time I've tested it since, I have just died over this perfume. This is by Narcotica, and this is Dulce Diablo. <sighs> you guys, this is so beautiful. If you love gourmand fragrances, you have got to get your nose on this. Again, do not blind buy this. This is a very expensive fragrance, and it is not a safe blind buy. It is very realistically foody gourmand. It has cacao, which to me kind of translates to smell like Tootsie Rolls. It has a lot of apricot in here. And the apricots smell very realistic, like very, oh my God, this is good. Very realistic apricots. This just makes my heart sore. Like this perfume makes my heart sore. <laughs> this is the perfume, you know, the type of perfume that when you smell it, you just like, remember why you love perfumes so freaking much. It's because of perfumes like this. So good. So as I was saying, the apricots in here are very realistic. They're not synthetic smelling. They smell like real apricots. It's so good. There's honey in here. There's also a lot of rum. There's cognac and rum in here. So this is very boozy. So opening is very boozy. Then I get hit with a big blast of apricots and a lot of cacao. There's sugar cane in here. There's Devana Oak Moss, there's Madagascar Vanilla, Sandalwood, Tonka Bean, Patchouli, and Musk. Delicious. It's so delicious. I love it. Plus, it's really unique. Like, you are not going to smell like anyone else on the planet, really. I mean, I don't know of anyone else who's going to smell like boozy apricot Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> it's just so good, and the performance is really good. 10 out of 10 perfume in my opinion. Get your nose on it. I think it's beautiful. So super excited to wear it in the month of December. That is by Narcotica Dulce Diablo. Up next we have by Atar Collection. This is Crystal Love for Her. And this is just a delicious vanilla and cacao. It's just like a vanilla chocolate fragrance to me. 
That's what I get mostly out of this. It's very sweet, very good performance, but it definitely has like a chocolatey and vanilla situation going on. So they're in the top, you have some fruity notes and there's rose, but I don't pick up on the top notes at all. To me, when I spray this, I just get this gorgeous vanilla and this gorgeous chocolate. This also has nutmeg in it as well. There's some musk in here. There's bourbon vanilla is what's in the base. I love bourbon vanilla. It smells so good. And there's also tonka beans. So it is a little bit powdery. So, but not much, not like over the top. It's just kind of like this fluffy, it has this like fluffy tonka bean feel to it. Just absolutely gorgeous. So if you love vanilla, if you love chocolate, definitely get your nose on this one. Again, excellent performance if you're just looking for a really sweet, yummy, delicious gourmand type fragrance. I do recommend by Atar Collection, Crystal Love for her. I'm super excited to wear it in December. I think it's just gonna be really, really cozy in cold weather. I also wanna put my travel spray of the new YSL Lieb Le Parfum on my tray. I did just get a travel size and I think I got it in the holiday savings event from Sephora because I was super curious about it. I heard a lot of different opinions on this one. Some people were saying it smells a lot like the intense version. Some people are saying it smells different. I have compared them side by side and I do find this one to be a bit different, but I do want to play around with it a little bit more to see which one I prefer because I am a big fan of the intense version. I really like this one too though. This one has ginger and saffron in the opening, which is different from the intense version. I don't think there's any ginger or saffron in that one. And there's also honey in here as well, which I really do pick up on, which is what makes it different from the intense version. To me, the intense version is very vanilla forward. This one does have a lot of vanilla in it, but it has those other like ginger, saffron, honey in here as well that I make out. And I can't decide which one I like better. It's so pretty. I love this one. So I'm super excited to play with this one some more and test it out. And I will report back to you at the end of December to let you know which one I prefer. All right, a perfume that I blind bought and I did not love at first, but now I am like head over heels in love. This is by the House of Oud, What About Pop? I am so excited to put this on my tray, although I have a confession to make. So I've been wearing this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I kept wanting to test it, but I kept reaching for it because I think it smells amazing. So this was pretty much on my November tray, if I'm going to be honest. But I'm putting it on my December tray officially because I think this is such a cozy, comforting, delicious, yummy perfume. So to me, this smells straight up like a salty caramel popcorn. I don't pick up on any of the other notes. To me, this is a straight up foodie gourmand. It smells delicious. So if you like realistic foodie gourmand perfumes and you want to smell like salty caramel popcorn, look no further than House of Oud What About Pop. And I do want to put by Montal Chocolate Greedy on my tray this month because wearing Choco Violet made me really crave Chocolate Greedy and I did find I do prefer this one a little bit more than Choco Violet, at least, at least at the current moment. I'll get back to you and let you know. But yeah, I just absolutely love this fragrance, you guys. This smells like powdery chocolate. It smells like I opened up some Nesquik powdered chocolate mix and I'm sniffing that with some dried fruits, basically. And I think it smells incredible. The lasting power is amazing. I love the sillage of this perfume. It is super cozy, super comforting. This makes me just wanna curl up on the couch with a fluffy blanket and watch a good movie on a rainy day. And it just gives me so much comfort. So I think this is perfect for cold, days when I just want to have like a chunky sweater and a big fluffy blanket and just feel super cozy. I think this is such a good chocolate scent. I know this was talked about a lot a couple of years ago on YouTube. For good reason, if you like chocolatey, powdery fragrances, then this is definitely for you. Very gourmand, very realistic to food. I mean, this smells like straight up chocolate and fruit, <laughs> basically. So you have to be into realistic foodie gourmands to like this, but I adore it. So that is by Montana. Montal Chocolate Greedy. All right, last but certainly not least, we have another one by Montal, and this is Ristretto Intense Cafe. I tried a sample of this before buying. I had the sample for the longest time, didn't pick it up, wasn't interested in it, was kind of over the Intense Cafe DNA, but then when I tried this, I immediately ordered a full-size bottle because I love it so much. This is gorgeous, you guys. I always wanted Intense Cafe to have more coffee and they delivered with this. So Ristretto definitely delivers on the coffee. 
If you found yourself wanting a dark roast coffee, like a strong dark roast coffee in your intense cafe, if the coffee that's in there just isn't enough for you, go for this one. Amazing performance, lasts all day with the most gorgeous scent trail. So you have coffee in the opening and you have some rose, but then in the mid you have roasted coffee beans. So like I said, there's a lot of coffee in here. You definitely have to like coffee in your fragrances. And then you have French rose in the mid, you have some woody notes, there's vanilla, caramel, there's musk, and amber. So this is very much that jammy rose that's in Intense Cafe with that delicious kind of caramel, sweet, musky, vanilla, amber, you know, base that is so addicting and intoxicating. Yeah, this is definitely the Intense Cafe for me. So that is by Montal Ristretto Intense Cafe. All right, you guys, and that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having an amazing day. I hope everybody is getting super excited for Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody, and yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.